It's really helpful to be able to have a sense of the tempo by looking at push without needing to stare at the computer or rely on hearing a very percussive beat. Oftentimes, especially in this show set, there's songs that start with no drums, and it's important for me to have a sense of what the rhythm is, even though there's not an actual drum beat playing, because I'm not gonna turn on the metronome and just bump that in my headphones. So, another good use for light feedback. If I press this button here, it's kind of hard to see. Let me make push a little bit bigger. The buttons here are basically ticking every quarter note, every beat, and are following each other. This is my visual metronome, and this is extremely useful for live shows. This is really, really, really easy to set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you this, and then I'll open this up for questions. So let me go back into Ableton Live. There we go. And I'm gonna move push out of the way. There we go. And I have a track, is this my track? No, those are returns. We have these, where is my MIDI track? Let's see. Uh, I'm just trying to make sure that I actually have this up here. I can't see it right now. Is this it? Light feedback. Here we go, all right. So I have a whole group of MIDI tracks set up to give me light feedback. Uh, we have Instant Jungle light feedback, Instant Jungle speed light feedback, beat repeat filter, and the metronome. So if we scroll down, I have buttons or pads down here uh, that were set up to control the metronome. I'm gonna basically just delete every single clip in this track, and I'm gonna set this up again. So we know that if we want pads to light up, all we have to do is just map that pad to a dummy clip, a blank MIDI clip, and we trigger that pad, it triggers the clip, the clip then lights the pad up. So I wanna make it so that each pad that I press will make it so that the next pad lights up, uh, a quarter note later. I can do this by using my dummy MIDI clips. So I got one clip here and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have a total of eight different clips here. I'm gonna map these clips to this row of buttons and these are all things that we've already done. So none of this is new just yet. So MIDI, I'll map you there. Uh, that's fine. Let's see, that'll go there. That's all good. Change my MIDI mapping, please. Yes. Some of these buttons were mapped to other locations, so that's why that little dialog box is popping up. Yup, map it there, map that there, map this here, and map that there. So at this point, if I launch one of these, uh, if I play one of these pads, it's gonna trigger that clip and not do anything else. That's not helpful at all. So what I want this to do is trigger a clip, that clip will trigger the next clip a beat later. When this next clip plays, it'll light up the pad corresponding to it. To do this, we're gonna use something called follow action. I'm gonna select all of these clips, so I got the first one selected, hold shift, select the last one. If I, let me move push out of the way here so y'all can see what's happening. If I mosey down to the clip properties, the lower left hand side of the screen, I'm gonna open that launch window again by hitting this L button. And in this area, beneath the uh, clip quantization, we have an area for follow action. Follow action will make it so that each clip plays for a certain amount of time and then does something else. I want each clip to play for one beat. So these three boxes here, the first box is the number of bars, the second box is the number of beats. I want each clip to play for one beat. After that clip plays for one beat, I want it to play the next clip in that group. So these two chooser boxes, you can assign an action to the clip, play for one beat and then play the next clip. That's my follow action, and now this is good to go. So now if I go ahead and I launch this uh, clip again by hitting this button, let me go ahead and make push bigger so you can see that this really worked. I don't want you to think I'm duping you. <laughs> but now we can see I have a visual metronome. And if I had a little bit less glare here, let me see if I can kind of shade this a bit. You can sort of see, there you go. So that's ticking every quarter note. And now I have a visual metronome, and I don't need to look at the computer or have an audible metronome to know exactly uh, when the next beat is coming up. 